Ladies and gentlemen, it's about time to begin. Let me see your bright, smiling faces to the center, please. We're about to begin. Say goodbye to everybody. You'll be able to see me a little bit. <laughs> Okay, here's our, uh, our yeah. agenda. Okay. Can't introduce Daryl. Yeah, I am. On behalf of our wonderful Senate District and our elected officials, including ourselves, thank you so much for taking time away from your families, away from your work life, away from your social life. It's very important. And we want to thank you. We want to thank you for the opportunity to serve. With that being, I feel like I'm at a pentagon club for some reason. <laughs> give you my usual stick, right? Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation and the pledges of allegiance led by like, our good friend, Mr. Darrell Thomas. Darryl. Sure. <laughs> invocation, please. Okay, they're ready, sir. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come together and to have this meeting. Lord, I pray that you would help us to stay on task. And Lord, although there are many opinions here, remind us it's just like the body of Christ that we are all important in the function that we do. We can't focus on being the hand or being the eye, but being one body to move forward. Help us to have an aggressive agenda and to be a light to the rest of the country. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Let's 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 to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to be Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm LaDonna Ashley. I helped uh, JT and Tanya organize tonight's event. Thank you so much for coming out to the reddest county in Texas. Yeah. Uh, I hope all of you have had a chance to meet JT Edwards, our new committee man, and Tanya Robertson, our committee woman, to the State Republican Executive Committee. And they're going to talk about what they've been learning at, uh, with, with the rest of the committees and what they intend to do as our new uh, representatives. So I'm going to turn the floor over to Tanya and JT. First things first, how y'all doing this evening? Yeah. All right, outstanding. It's a mighty fine time to be the great Republican. And, and the first thing I want to say is, and this is so humble, thank you. We lost a very good friend, a great leader, and the committee man McCool. And to be even considered to have the honor and to have the privilege of representing you in his stead is truly a very humbling experience. I know Daniel is looking over us, each and every one of us from Harris County, Bay Lake, Sterling of Galveston. His leadership, his love, his faith, and his devotion to this state and to our great country and to each and every one of you is something to be remembered for many years and probably our lifetime to come. And I, I stand before you today privileged to be able to represent you on the State Republican Executive Committee. We are one family, one vision, one hope, and one fight. And we're gathered here today to take on folks who seek to keep us in, 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 in poverty, folks who seek to take away our guns, folks who choose not to secure our borders, folks who want to take our hard-earned money and give it to those choose not to work. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to actually give you the review for this evening. 
So as you know, as soon as I was seated as your committee man, we went to work. We had a couple of issues. One, we're talking about reporting in our own state Republican executive committee. There is a lot of discussions that are taking place on whether or not the proceedings of our, as we represent you, in various Republican Party of Texas functions. I'm pleased to report that that uh, actually that that conversation continues, and that both Tanya and I will be active players in that. We believe in transparency. We believe in open government, and most of all, we believe in accountability. Is that right? So we will please uh, on your behalf. We sought to send the rule. We sought to, instead of debate the rule and prolong this thing. We'd say we're going to send it back to the rules committee, and at the next. Uh, State Republican Executive Committee, we will be there in rules to debate, to debate the merits thereof. Also, what we also, we, we also had the opportunity to pass a resolution, and of Molly Lugo, in fact, it was actually written by her, that talks about, that sends support of Israel against an enemy that we have long suspected and that the Chief Executive of the United States has willingly ignored. In fact, he likes to play golf. It's called ISIS. ISIS, if you will. They are a danger to liberty. They are a danger to freedom. And they are a danger to the future of our country. Also, one final note. I won't be long, I promise. I know I can talk forever. <laughs> well, thank you, Sarah. <laughs> one other thing I might add. Okay? We've got something coming up, and actually, Tanya's going to talk to you more about it. Okay? We've got to decide the future of our party. We're going to have a vacancy soon, and there is a war underway. Would you agree? <laughs> a, battle. a battle. Not a war, but a battle. And we're going to, at, at some point, turn to you guys and ask for your opinion to help us assist in representing your interests. With that being said, we thank you all for coming. And I thank you for the privilege to serve. God bless you all. God bless the great state of Texas. I think so. Okay, can y'all hear me? Okay, I don't have his voice. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we decided that I would talk to you guys about the issues and challenges that we're going to face. Um, I guess our upcoming term as SREC committee members. Uh, JT touched on the, the rule uh, of the recording, the recording rule. As it stands now, the only RPT, Republican Party of Texas, staff are allowed to record and you may ask for a copy of that recording um, and you might get it if you sign a waiver or in a disclaimer that you won't share it. So my question to you is, if you had an opportunity to watch these meetings, say live streaming like we're doing now, um, <laughs> um, would, would you do it? Yes. Would, would you want to see yes. what's happening? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I would really like to take that message back to other SREC members and especially the, the Rules Committee. Um, actually, JT and I voted to go ahead and debate the amendment that was presented um, that would allow anybody attending these meetings to record. Because actually, in reality, how can you police recording devices, especially these days? I mean, you can stick a phone in your pocket and press record and that's, that's it. Um, unless you want to hire the TSA to s sit at the door and frisky when you walk in, right? So we'll keep you updated on that. Sunshine is the best. That's right. <laughs> and as JT mentioned, um, you know, I, we'll always vote for transparency. That's, um, you know, open government. That's what liberty is about. And, and if you'll allow me, um, I wanted to share a definition with you today. I was, I was thinking about this today that a lot of people don't really know the real definition of liberty. So I googled it and I read these numerous definitions and none of them sounded like what I remembered. 
So I grabbed my 1953 Webster Dictionary off the shelf, it's about this thick, and found the real definition of liberty. This is partial. Um, it says, uh, freedom from restraint in a general sense, applicable to the body or the will or mind. As the body is at liberty when not confined, the will or the mind is at liberty when not checked or controlled. That's liberty. And that's, that's what we're supposed to have in our, in our country, in our great state of Texas. <clears throat> um, and to touch on what JT talked about, the chairman, the chairman's race, um, it's going to be both a privilege and a challenge, um, this, this race. Uh, right now we have three candidates that have announced. Uh, Wade Emmert is the uh, Dallas County GOP chair. Don't know him very well. Uh, we haven't even talked to him yet. We decided as a Harris County uh, SREC caucus that we were going to wait <coughs> to talk to these candidates until after the election because we have more important business to take care of, right? Um, Tom Meckler is the current RPT treasurer. Um, he seems to think he's the front runner. And uh, Jared Woodfield is the uh, immediate past chairman for the Harris County GOP. So those are the three that have announced. And like JT said, we're going to ask for your input. When the election date is announced, when Chairman Munisteri announces that he's stepping down, we'll send out a survey. And we want to hear from you guys because it's not really just our decision. It's, it's yours because we're in this together. Um, now for the, the elephant in the room, right quick, I know I'm almost out of time. Something that disturbed me was something that wasn't talked about at this last meeting. There was not one mention of our border crisis. Not one. It's up to us to make that an issue for our party and for our community leaders. <coughs> Just because it's not directly affecting us, I mean, Dallas is in our backyard. It's right there. And that's, that's just the tip of the iceberg. We've got human trafficking. We've got um, our, a, a child in CCISD died two weeks ago from an unknown, unknown or untold illness and they're not sharing any information. The child was from Guatemala. He came in three months ago from Guatemala. So um, <clears throat> it's up to us, you know, to, to let our community leaders know. Dale Holes is back here. He's got a border crisis action plan. You're going to leave here with an action item. Um, links, supporting information. Um, contact information, talking points. What we have is phase two of the Border Action Crisis Plan that the Texas Grassroots developed. We put it out about two months ago, tried to engage our state legislature. They're running and hiding. They don't want to talk about it. That was what we did was before Ebola, before ISIS, but we predicted everything that's happening now. This is, talks about phase two of how to engage your state legislature, how to engage each other. There's three pages here, stapled together. If you come pick them up, take a look at it. You can find this information online at the Clear Lake Tea Party website. Thanks. Thank you, Dale. Thank you. We have lots of copies of those, right? <laughs> and now we're going to move on to our volunteer recognition. Right. So, one of the other privileges we have, one of the other privileges that we have as USRECs is to determine Right, to determine and to actually recognize our volunteers throughout our Senate district. A lot of people, all of you, are excellent volunteers. But these six people, we've actually pared down. We, how many days and nights we've it been was over tough. this? There are so many. Oh my God! Active. <laughs> it's just like awesome people here in but, our in our district. But we thought it would be a good. Um, I don't know, a good something tradition to do every meeting is right. to recognize outstanding volunteers 
Right. So with that said, um, I guess I'll start with uh, Brazoria County. Go ahead. Okay. Um, we want to recognize Joy. Joy. Come on up here, Joy. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. Galveston County. Although they are not present tonight, I also like to announce Tom Perry, one of our excellent volunteers. Also from Galveston County, Ms. Carol Dean. Okay, Harris County, uh, we have one of them here, Ken Moore from Harris. Yeah. Go on, Ken. <laughs> don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> Ken Moore and Tammy Nielsen um, couldn't make it tonight, but we just wanted to recognize these outstanding volunteers. If y'all don't mind, we'd like to get a picture after when everything's over. Okay. Thank you so much. If I could say so, without these volunteers, without you as volunteers, our party cannot endure. As I always say, the Packers Bear Club, free government requires active citizens. That means each and every last one of you. And thank you all for what you have done for our party, for our country, and for our great state. Thank you very much. God bless you. Okay. Yes, I am, but we recognize yes. elected officials. Yes. We forgot that. Okay. And without further ado, I'd like to take the time out to recognize some of our elected officials who serve the public, our both elected and our party officials. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to the Missouri County Republican Party Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Yvonne Bush. Yvonne is awesome. There have been many a phone call and an email, and I really appreciate, Tanya and I both appreciate your wisdom and your continued leadership in taking us across the finish line for November 4th. God bless you. Thank you, Yvonne. Also, I'd like to also recognize a very good friend of mine and one of your newest city councilmen here in Pearland. Please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome the Honorable Gary Moore. elected officials, could you stand up and announce yourself? I'm still learning a lot. I'm still learning. Okay. Oh, oh, I just saw you the other night. I'm sorry. Please, go ahead, Commissioner. Please. I'm still learning some Missouri. I love you guys. I really do. I love that entire city district. Still learning. Anybody else in the room? No, I forget. But I overlook. Thank you for your continued service to the party, and God bless you as you continue your endeavors to represent us. Okay, may I recognize who in here is a precinct chair? Oh, I was. Can you stand precinct up? chair, stand up! <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I know you're kind of shy. Yeah, but without you guys, we wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> You're the, you're the roots in the grass. And thank, thank you so much for all the hard work that you did and will continue to do as we move forward. Now, do we want to do the, the Q&A? And yeah. um, we'll invite Gary and Yvonne. Yvonne, if you'd like to join us for the Q&A, people want to ask questions. And Stacy, did you want to come up for a Q&A from the, sure. from the audience? Yeah. Okay, where's the hat at? <laughs> Now, did, um, people no, that, this is not a shooting match. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, people that um, wanted to ask a question, what we were doing, we were asking you to put your name on a piece of paper and put it in a basket. Okay. Since we only had time for five questions, we were going to draw names. There's nothing in the basket. No. There's nothing. Okay, then we'll take the first five hands. One, two, Joe. three, four. Can I get a five? <laughs> Wait a minute, Harris County. Harris County okay, five. Okay, Scott. Okay, all right. Okay, Joy, you're first. We got our five. Joy, you're first. Please, okay. ladies first. Um, regarding the 
chairman uh, election that is coming up, will uh, the two of you be sending us the information on who is being uh, interested in running for that position so we can back We sure will. Yeah, we sure absolutely. will. If, if you want that, we absolutely. sure will. Yes. We'll send you what yeah, we have. Absolutely. We'll send you what we have. We'll send you what you what we have. More importantly, here's what we'll do. We'll go a step further. You know what we're going to do? We'll, also, we'll send you what we have, but we'll also put it on our websites. That way everybody can see in SD11 just what's going on and who are the people that's running. You know? Now I ain't going to put their social security numbers on there the date of birth. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Privacy is concerned, right? Where's he stepping down? We don't know. As soon as, yeah, as soon as we, they said, he said after the election, so. We don't know. It's a moving target. Yeah. There's a lot of speculation within the party. Some say June, some say right after November 4th. We don't know. We haven't gotten it. Maybe the, the December meeting we'll find out. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay, who is. Um, well, I have a question. Will you invite them down? Well, JT had, a, JT had a fantastic idea. <laughs> And if we can get this recording thing cleared up and we're allowed to record in these meetings, um, JT had the idea of having a candidate forum right. for the SREC of all, for all the candidates. Now, can, can I speak to you a little bit? Sure. Now, thank you for letting the cat out the bag already. <laughs> we're being recorded. It's all about, it's all about sharing. We, yes. We hope at some point... And I want to talk about this a little bit, and that's fine, because maybe there's a message that the candidates, if y'all are looking very closely, and you've been trying to catch up with Tony and I, we've been a little busy with Get Out the Vote. Here's the deal. We got three senators. The SREC kind of consists of, and Chairman Dewey, you can step right in. You've been around a long time. You understand this. Harris County, Galveston. Bayer County, Dallas-Fort Worth. That's where the center of the SREC is as far as the most votes. And, you know, in Harris, as being part of SREC, mm -hmm. we said, well, we're just going to focus on November 4th. So I was talking to Tanya. I said, you know what? In each of the particular centers, let's have a candidate for them. Let's have these folks show up, not a dog and pony, but actually real life and have the candidate chairs engaged and involved in the process to where we ask real good questions of who is going to be the next leader of the Republican Party of Texas. I haven't thrown the proposal out to my fellow SRECs yet. But it's I'm on sorry. the way. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but it's on the way. <laughs> you see what I gotta work with it? Thank y'all, by the way. <laughs> Allow me to have a great political moment. <laughs> <laughs> My okay. political wife. Who, who was that, Sherry? Can I ask a follow up question to that? Yeah, go right ahead. Does it have to be the SREC that puts on the candidate forums? Because y'all are muted by your ability to record or. There's 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 no rule. There's no rule. There's no rule. There there's no rule there's that no says rule. that we can't that you can't that you can't that you can't that you can't. Yeah. The county chairs. We still live in a free state. Well, last time that wasn't a volunteer. That was. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the rule, <laughs> Sherry. <laughs> well, I'm hoping that maybe the county chairs will do something. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> Have they ever come to y'all, the county chairs, and had a forum before? You mean? For running for state chair. State chair? This is kind of an unusual situation. It is. We usually elect state chairs at conventions. Yes, right. I know that. Yeah. It's usually when we stand. Yeah, not very often do the SREC get to elect the, right. the state chair. Right. Yeah, this is a highly unusual situation. Chairman Dewey is correct. Is that convention where we select our state chair? Chairman, the chair of ministry has done a great job for us. My goodness, he's really worked his butt off. He has. He has. From state, from, from state. How about a round of applause for the chairman of the state? And speaking of which, yeah. isn't he going to be here Tuesday? Tuesday night. Tuesday He'll be night. here Tuesday night. Okay. Tuesday night. Okay. Then. Yes. Next question. As yes, a, sir. As a follow-up to your <laughs> follow up. border crisis wasn't oh. on y'all's agenda. Who sets the SREC agenda? I mean, do y'all have input? I would hope you do. The committees. The committees have input, and the chairman sets the agenda. 
We need to have a candidate tonight before we elect. The chairman will be here chair Tuesday Biden. night. No, but I mean, <laughs> uh, before we elect a new one. Yeah. Right. To be a right, and that's right. what we were talking about. Right. I mean, yeah. every, there's only 64 of y'all, right? Yep. 62. 62. Two. 62. 62. 31 Senate districts. Right. Yeah. I'll throw in another Senate district. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, that. So y'all should be able to add things to an agenda. Yeah, I believe we do. It's a matter of going back to the bylaw. Six of you. I mean, some. Right. Some, that's some some troublesome when you yeah. serve on a board. I, I believe there is. I believe there is in the I, bylaws. Yeah, I'm almost I, positive. I think you can ask for something to be put on the agenda, but it's to, it's to the discretion of the chairman. Right. It's always at the discretion to, of the chairman. Yeah. <laughs> That's the privilege of being the chairman. Right, Eva? Right. <laughs> um, on the back of the agenda. Wait a minute, hang on a second. If I may answer to that, Perry's task force on infectious disease will be delivering their report on December 1st. Okay. If the SRMC could get a report out on their agenda of what that says, that would answer, that would put the focus on the border and Ebola and everything else. Right. Okay. So I would suggest that you try to get that out. All right, we'll take that into account. Right. Thank you, Dale. Awesome. Appreciate it. Okay, we had, there was somebody else with a question. Scott. Uh, well, I was just going to ask, why Why is Steve Ministeri retiring so soon? Why not serve out his full term? Because it seems like he's kind of set up this situation where the convention doesn't get to decide who the next chairman is. Instead, fewer people are deciding. So why would he set it up that way? We don't know. We don't know. We really don't know, Scott. I can just say what I heard, and I heard that he was, he was not going to run for re-election. Greg Abbott asked him to run to, to keep the to keep the organization running through election day, uh, and then the agreement was that he would be stepping down. My understanding is that there's some health health concerns or health issues. Right. Mm -hmm. I can't. We can't confirm or deny that. Yeah. That that's a discussion. I know I had a recent discussion with the chair of For sure, when he comes here on Tuesday. Y'all can ask him. <laughs> we are so much in trouble. We are, we are so much in trouble. <laughs> now, uh, uh, if I may, if I may for a second, that's the, the SRC. I think it's it's fun. It's, it, it's a tough job, but it's fun. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've got a lot of great SRCs from around the state. We really have a vested mm -hmm. interest in our Senate district, and we're a great Senate district. You know why? We got lots of energy. We got ports. We've got oil refineries, but most important of all, we have the number we have the number one and the number four. Uh, it's going to be the first and the fourth most conservative counties in the state of Texas in our yeah, Senate district. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was my daughter. <laughs> all right. Did we hit our five? Um, we did, but we have time for for more. Um, this gentleman yeah. had one. Okay, I'm sorry. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hang on. Ladies first? Okay. All right, y'all playing ping pong? Go ahead, Chuck. Go ahead. <laughs> Someone that you can talk to and he, he talks our language and he is very, very interested in Brazoria County and Dan Patrick. Dan is talking every day to everybody, 14, 18 hours a day. He's talking about border security and all that. And believe me, he has got our best interest at heart. And he'll back us. I know I talk to him very frequently. Okay. And he is a dad in the wool area that he loved Missouri County, just like he does Harris County. He's lived there all of his life. I'm really looking forward to what he does yeah. at this session. Really looking forward to it. It's going to be quite an interesting uh, legislative session. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Did you have a question? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Excuse me. That's okay. Take your time. We can come closer. Yes, ma'am. I don't understand why they didn't encase the borders. They kept it out. Legals came in the border. The president has refused to answer any questions concerning that. Who do you go to? Well, that's that's part of this border crisis pro, uh, action item. Oh, she asked. She asked um, with the Ebola and all the other diseases that we unknown diseases coming across the border, and the president refusing to do his job. What can we do? 
Well, that's that's why um, the Clear Lake Tea Party formulated this border action plan, uh, along with other activists around the state, the whole state of Texas, and what Texas can do, what our governor can do, our lieutenant governor, our speaker of the house. There, there are a number of items that, that Texas, or action items that Texas can do to start securing our border. It's, it's a start. We have to start somewhere. Right. In, in addition to their response, let me, uh, just for the record, let me make sure to repeat the question. The president has fallen asleep at the wheel with regards to responding to Ebola. Yeah. Okay. We all agree with that? Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. Amen. All right. We know that we have a porous border. Many have said that. Canadian doctors, U.S. doctors, even the CDC director, who they're calling for his resignation, right, Madam Chair, has said we had a porous border. Okay? There's a variety of different responses. There's just one of them. Another thing that you could do, contact your elected officials. We probably put something together on the SREC, too, in the form of a resolution. Okay? There's a variety of different responses taking place. Here's my advice to you. Go get educated. The most dangerous person in the world is an uneducated person about a particular issue. This is a very, very important issue that affects our very livelihoods. Okay? Stay informed. Stay current. Okay? We're going to do our part. That I can assure you. Does that answer your question, ma'am? All right. God bless you. Thank you. Questions? As you all know, I was going to ask, that since our state representatives didn't show up, I believe the number one issue facing the 84th legislative session is our speaker's position. Now, currently, Scott Turner is the only one that's had the courage to step up and say he's going to run against the Trump. Not Joe Strauss. Now, Joe Strauss has been three sessions. He has proven he can be counted on to kill the conservative legislation. I fail to understand why a conservative state legislature, specifically a conservative state house, should have a speaker who can count on 100% of the Democrats voting for him. Should we not have a speaker that can have count on 100% of the Democrats voting against him? And I would like to know specifically what you all are going to do as, as, as SREC committee people to work to get us a conservative speaker of the House and not a damn right. Well, I can answer that at first if you don't mind, JT. Yeah, I'll have a response. Okay. <laughs> um, for the last, has it been two sessions? Yeah, this is Speaker Three. Showdown 3.0. Okay. Yeah. The last five, four years, um, I've personally been active in trying to replace Joe Strauss, personally. And um, I personally have met Scott Turner, vetted Scott Turner, and he's my choice. And um, every state representative that I talk to, I talk to him about it. And that's... That's really all all we can do. I mean, you can't force them. Right. <laughs> but you so, can educate and right. tell them your stance. So let me actually tell you what's going on. If you understand the bylaws and you understand what SRECs do, first of all, yes, we can talk to all of the representatives. Yes, we can. Okay? But it's going to require, for your choice of who the Speaker of the House is going to be, it's going to require each of you, whether you're in House District 23, whether you're in House District 24, whether you're in House District 128, 129, we got a little bit of 144, I think. Uh, we do. Yeah, That's a little bit, just a little bit, a little bit of 144, just a little bit, away out there in the east, okay? It's going to be important for you to communicate to your legislature who your choices are. If you are expecting, let me go ahead and it's level set right now. If you are expecting the SREC to step into the speaker's ranks, I'll be honest with you. We're concerned about running the affairs and, and what you charge us with running the affairs of the Republican Party of Texas. And that requires getting out the vote. That requires growing the party. 
And that means on a mission, I know one of my missions that I said I would take on is, and I need your help with, is going into non-traditional conservative areas to find new Republican and conservative voters. That means, thank you. We can preach to the choir all we want to, but we do we take the word and the gospel to the Gentiles, things like who the Speaker of the House is going to be will be irrelevant. Instead, we should be focusing on taking on Battleground, Texas. Yeah. Okay? May 16, 2014, New York Times. Steve Mostyn, Jim Brown. You know who Mostyn is already. Yeah. You know who Jim Brown is, the executive director of Battleground, Texas. After we finish kicking their butts on November 4th, they're going to start work to try to return the favor. We should be focusing on that and that alone. All right? Okay. But personally, yeah. I'm fighting for Scott. <laughs> personally, yes, on a personal level. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Absolutely. Boston and the Democrats are the enemy. Period. Period. And it's going to require each and every one of you in this room, in your neighborhoods, in your precincts, in your county commissionerships, and your constableships in our counties and in our state to defeat Battleground Texas and Steve Moss. So, and look, during these next two years, Tanya and I, we're going to equip you with the tools to do so. Starting in February. Starting in February, in fact. All right, any other questions? We got plenty of time. Yes, sir. Mr. I, I, I agree with what you were saying. But Thank you. As a matter of understanding, how the SREC actually gets into some of these other issues like the borders and, and the, I understand our, our goal, but is there, do, do you all end up setting a, a, a set of goals or subjects that, that, uh, that we're going to, Republicans are going to support or well, how, but, how to, like Common Core and some of the other things that we all are you know, upset about? Well, uh, the RPT works kind of like what the how the state convention works with committees and resolutions coming out of those committees and, and, rules, being and rules coming out of the committees Finance. and then you take those that come out of the committees and then the SREC debate them and then vote on them it's it's the same same process I guess what I'm saying is, is uh, do you actually set a direction I mean you have you have goals that you're charged with and, and those are all uh, very understandable. But after that, is there? If I'm just asking the question, sure, is sure. there a portion of this to where you end up being sort of the focal point for setting some direction for the Texas? Can I answer? Sure. Yeah. So the SREC, Robert, how it works? This how it works. Okay. We are the continuity between conventions. Okay. okay. As Tanya talks about, you have various committees that are set up. Okay. Our focus, and probably, and I'm pretty sure my fellow committee men and committee women would agree, our focus is what our Senate district says, what's important to us in SD11. And then, of course, Tanya and I, we have to go and find like-minded SRECs and put that all together and try to put together um, internal party legislation, if you will, that sets that direction going forward, okay? So you have 31 Senate districts. Everybody's got something different, right, Chairman Dewey? Everybody got something that's different, okay? We worry about y'all, okay? And we're going to turn to you guys and ask you to help us set that direction. The good news is we have like-minded SRECs just next door to us, right? We do. We have 29 new SREC committee members this time around. 47% of the State Republican Executive Committee is brand new. We're two of them. Yeah, we're two of them. <laughs> um, with, with that said, on the back of your agenda, um, there's a Republican Party structure graph 
Mm -hmm. um, I know I get that question all the time. What is, what is, who are you? Who do you represent? <laughs> <laughs> Why so, are you here? So we thought this would be helpful. Um, it's the agendas are, are up here with, and this on the Does back. Does anybody have an agenda? Keep. Raise your hands if you don't have one. <laughs> Tanya, what yes, committees are you two on? I am on the volunteer committee. Okay. I was appointed, our chairman appoint, you select three committees out of all of them that you would like to be appointed to and I didn't get my first two picks. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, were they? Um, resolutions. And uh, I think it's party organization. Okay, you probably want to know. I haven't been assigned a committee yet, but as of my recent conversation with the chairman, I will be joining Tanya on volunteerism. She got to work the convention. Come on, really? And fun. also the grassroots. I'll be on the grassroots committee. But I, but in April, I am seeking to move off of grassroots to the candidate resource or candidate resource candidate committee. Candidate resource committee. Now, why is that important? Can I know why it's important? Yes. Okay, well, let me get, it's almost like I need to turn the cameras off for a minute. But let me just tell you the highlights of it. Okay, candidate resource committee. There's three things. Vince candidates. But more important, the money that comes out of your party, out of the party caucus that goes up to the candidate resource committee comes back to our local elected officials for us to battle the Democrats in November. Now the state guys, they got their thing they do. Uh, some of the federal candidates, we're talking about judges. We are talking about county judges. We are talking about county commissioners. We're talking about city council. Okay? And one of the things we promised this year is we're going to educate some of our down ballot guys on how to apply for the money. Okay? All right? See, we got something for everybody. We're going full service here, sorry. Yes, <laughs> I'm bringing home the bacon. <laughs> Good. You know what that means? I'll never be a congressman. Right, Dennis? <laughs> yes, sir. So, uh, uh, one of the other things that the state party and the Abbott campaign are spending a lot of money on yeah. and a lot of volunteer time on is building a database uh, for the state. And mm -hmm. it seems like with the, with the different iPhone apps and things they train us to use uh, over the last uh, several Bless months. You. Uh, are y'all, how happy are y'all with the database that they've been able to build up? Do you feel like it's competitive with the Democrats so far, or do they... You want to answer that? I can I, answer I, I can answer I think that. it's too new to actually gauge if it's, I mean, we're, honestly, we're 10 years behind the Democrats. Right. Period. We're 10 years behind. But I'm an IT guy. Can I step in? Yeah. The answer is not satisfied. I am not satisfied. A little bit about my background, y'all. Most of y'all know me already. I'm an IT weenie. Yeah, I said. Okay, databases, information gathering, information harvesting, data mining, that type of thing. The Democrats, Tanya is right. The Democrats have 10 years on us. The good news is the RNC has invested numerous resources and start to bring in some of the brightest minds in my field to help us close that gap. I, GOP data center is adequate. Like Tanya said, the numbers at the end of the day will prove how effective we really are. Mm -hmm. And that's the God given truth. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Winter. Okay. Um, you really think we're a decade behind in our um, IT? Absolutely. Yeah. If not more. Okay. Mm -hmm. they, they use, I think we are. It's not necessarily how big and bad your computer is or how cool your database is. It's about how you exploit it. It's one thing to have the technology, but what to do with the intelligence when you have it. You know, how do you use it? Where do you go? You know, I see you over there. Don't worry about it. We'll get you in a second. We'll get you in a second. Put your hand down. I got it. All right. That's my old military thing. You got to mind that, don't you? <laughs> so... Joey, to answer your question, that's Scott's question, we're behind. But we're, we're, we're gaining ground. Well, we are and, gaining ground. And with that said, we were talking about our next town hall isn't going to be, it's going to be a combination town hall mm -hmm. slash training, mm -hmm. an all day training. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to Beth back there today about this. Um, we're going to start training on the app. Um, 
register voters, uh, yep. deputy voter registrars. I mean, you name it, we're going to train starting right after the election. Because yep. we're looking at 2016 and 2020. 2016, 2018, 2020. Well, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People focus on the presidential election. And people forget we have elections next year. And they're important. The elections. local, they are. Local, the local elections, local are, elections are, the most, are, are so the most important. important, right, yes, Carrie? <laughs> local elections take care of your streets, your sewers, your stop signs, your schools. And that's one of the things. Folks, do not, please, if you don't listen to anything from Tanya and I, please. Pay, pay close attention to your local politics, whether it's your school board or whether it's your city council. I can't express it enough how important that is. You know, you want to fix that pothole or you want that water main fixed? You got to know the right, you got to put the right people in place to get those taken care of. Most importantly, though, at the local, the local levels serve as, if you will, the farm team. I wouldn't say Peter, I think Peter is too offensive, but the farm team, the breeding ground. <laughs> for our future politicians at state and at federal level. So it's important to take, take the, uh, to one, be informed, two, be advised, three, be active, okay? Well, can I add a little something to that? Yeah, go ahead. Eight percent of registered voters in the city of Houston elected Anise Parker the last mayoral election. Eight percent. Can I say something? That's why, that's why local elections are important, and look what she's doing now. Yeah. It okay. affects all of us. Councilman Moore. Just real quick. Out of 106,000 people in Pearland, you know how many people elected me? 3,000. 3,000. Okay. 3,000. And that was a mayoral race. That's question about. We're going to get Eddie. Question about. Actually, it's not a question, but to address two of you. Um, as far as technology is concerned, if I may, real quickly, the Republicans are behind. Because I can tell you right now, about around Texas last year, and I saw them do this. Uh, Harris County Democrats went live with an app to keep their precinct chairs in touch with one another. I don't know of any Republican group that does that. As far Republicans are failing at that because what Democrats are doing is they're buying up data left and right from uh, clearing houses. You go shopping at Kroger, H-E-B, wherever. They know about it, which is why they can specifically target age groups, ethnic groups. They can target neighborhoods. Even a uh, guy who's running for uh, election in for state rep, Mike Schofield, brought this up. So what they, the Democrats, are doing on each individual in America, they can have up to, not voters, each individual, they can have up to 8 million data points. So if you think that the GOP is not behind, that the GOP is uh, not that far back in technology, you're dead wrong. And I can't explain much more than how I know. Thank Trust you. me, I know. Thank you. Question in the back. Yeah, a couple things. If y'all remember, came to this very same place. Because I remember I was back on the campaign trail. 
Right, Sharon? That's right. <laughs> right. I still owe her long distance bill. <laughs> <laughs> Can I borrow some money from the county party and pay Sharon for a long distance bill? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> long distance bill. I don't have my pill. Okay, anyway, seriously speaking, folks, Committee Man Robinson actually has actually gone around the Senate District and around the state of Texas talking about his efforts to help the RNC fast ramp and close the gap on our technological disadvantage. Okay? I plan to be a part of that. Time to bring some real experts to the table instead of a bunch of people talking about blue sky, blue sky stuff. There's a lot of eggheads. Yes, I said eggheads, and I'm going to get a lot of trouble for that. That's I'm an IT guy. It's okay. But what we need is grassroots conservatives such as myself and others who do have the technological background to help close that gap as quickly as possible and get those tools into your hands so that we can not only grow the base, but that we can also turn out our voters, independent voters, and non-traditional non Republican voters. It is very, very important, and I hope that, you know, in the coming weeks and months ahead, that I can be a bigger part of that, I hope. Well, and you have to do what the Democrats do. Yep. They, they take issues yep. and, ex and use them. And like I'm gonna, I'm gonna use Houston again. Um, when Houston City Council first announced that they were gonna vote on this non-equal equal rights ordinance, um, pastors and grassroots activists from all over Harris County merged onto City Hall. I was the minority there. There were every color of the rainbow together standing on one issue. And to get in the middle of that and touch those people and talk to them and make connections is priceless. Just takes a little time. Just a little time. Right. So. And final point, I also promised you tools. You will have tools very soon. I can't talk about them, not yet, but we're almost ready. <laughs> we're almost ready. We're almost ready. <laughs> I don't want the Democrats to see that. Okay, um, Sherry and Scott, y'all are the final questions. Ladies first. Mrs. Mrs. Edwards, no relation, by the way. No, no you're my sister through Christ, though. Right. Right. You're my sister through Christ. Go ahead, sister. Go on, speak to Sister uh, You talked about the outreach, and I was wondering if that's something that you're going to touch on in the training. And I'm going to tell you why specifically I'm asking. Okay, go ahead. I tell had to why. miss uh, the previous um, convention. I was you know, there were four years ago, I had missed one, and then I was here this last time. And four years ago, I was like equal number as an alternate. This last time going to convention, and it was about the same time of year, um, we sent only a third of the delegates that we could have sent, and we sent no alternates. And I just think that that's going in the wrong direction. Right. And I'm talking about Missouri County SB 11. Right. Well, in talking. So, I, you know, somehow we're missing people. Perhaps. Uh -huh. Right. It's the people who were not there. And, and there were just not even that many more people that were at the SD convention. I mean, it was just we empty. Everybody that was there and didn't feel like Right. That, that's an that, issue. That, that's an issue everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, that's so an issue. Yeah, we do is Texas to me, and we need to turn that around. Exactly. Right. And, exactly. And then uh, I'm gonna. Uh, and part of that is education, though. Well, the other thing it's education, but going back to what Sharon said, outreach. You know what? I tell you what. Y'all seen a lot of us lately, haven't you? Huh? All right. You're gonna see a lot more of us. Coming out, and I think that's one of the things that can help out a lot. If they know that they're, if they can reach out, touch, and feel their SRECs, their county chairs, other party officials. I think that's going to encourage and spur participation. You know, besides that, I'm the ugly guy. Tell me, it's a good looking one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to work? <laughs> I'm so much in trouble. Yes, I know. <laughs> I love the gals. So. Well, we're gonna, and I think the other thing is, I believe in my heart to heart, to being a Republican since 1988, thanks to a drill sergeant who educated me, being a Republican is fun. And I think we need to get back to that. As Tanya talked about, it's the issues. 
It's the issues. It's nothing about your color. It's nothing about your pocketbook. It's about the issues. And I think if we turn around and we talk to our neighbors and we talk to our friends and we tell them we are Americans, we are Texans created under one God on this beautiful planet. We love life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I am proud to be a conservative Republican. If you can say that, right, you can go out there and have that fun, right? Okay. Any, okay, and Mr. Apple, you have the privilege of the last question. You better not be long. Okay, I'm sorry. I just wanted to touch on two things that we talked about today. Both are very near and dear to my heart. Uh, number one is the speaker's race. Um, if we do get the opportunity to hear from the candidates that are running from speaker, um, I say don't just take them for what they say. Find friends that you trust. Facebook is great for this. Find out what other people have to say about them. If you have any Facebook friends in Dallas, find out how they feel about Wade Emery. Find out how other people feel. I you think the chairman's, you, race, I, chairman's, I, race, I, chairman's race. Chairman's race. Chairman's race. Yeah, that's okay. You can get a lot of good information. Now, the other thing Tanya mentioned, and I think the gentleman back here asked the question, the speaker's race. Number one, most importantly, we need to focus on nothing between now and November 5th except for beating the tar out of the Democrats. Here, here. On November the 6th, okay, we need to, we need to, to do something. And here, here's the issue. The House district representatives are afraid of retaliation from the speaker. Put on a bad committee, marginalized, minimalized. The answer to that is they need to be more afraid of us replacing them. And so, I don't want to talk about it very much right now, but I'm putting together a strategy. I'm going to need a lot of help, a lot of boots on the ground, but it's my intention to change that and reverse that. I know it's an uphill battle, I know it's tough, because they don't fear us enough. Okay. Now, I do have a question. Uh, are there any roles that you guys have? You guys are two people, a lot of area. Uh, are there any roles that you could solicit some volunteers for to fill specific roles, whether it be some sort of IT help? Uh, you know, I don't know. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll answer that because that's easy. <laughs> I can put you to work. <laughs> in yes. I, in fact, <laughs> here's one of the efforts we just right in there. Yes. Boy, the Italian's tough. Italian's tough on me, y'all. Italian's tough on me. But here, to, to answer the question, can you volunteer to help our city district? Yes. There's a variety of different ways. I know your county chair needs some work. You, you always take the volunteers, of course, right? We got precinct chair vacancies. Your SRECs can't be everywhere at once. We would like to have the privilege and the honor to ask you at some point, especially with our very busy schedules, to represent us. Also, we may call upon you for a special task force to help us research a particular item that we're going to have to consider before the SREC. Details to follow. I knew I just got here. I'll put you to work. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not scared. Okay. okay, one final question. I just want to make a quick comment. comment. We all came back to the Republican Convention and we worked our tails off to mm -hmm. get the platform approved. We got the way it was. Mm -hmm. And we came back and there was this rash of illegal aliens crossing our borders yes. and into our county. Mm -hmm. We had one man that stepped up into this county and wrote a resolution to support us to mm -hmm. stop the legal aliens. And I want to say thank you, Stacey Adams. Commissioner, you want to you want to take a moment to talk? Go ahead, Commissioner. Well, and that was my question a long ago about getting it on the agenda. I mean, it needs to be dealt with. Right. Wait a minute. It's his. Wait a minute. You sent your resolution via who? It came to the RPT. Well, that no, was in no, the platform. That was our county resolution. That was the county okay, county resolution. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's Sorry. I'm just saying that that should be discussed at y'all's level. It should be. It should be. Yep. You're right. It needs to be. I don't know how to tell you to do it. It, it should be. I've got enough problems not telling you how to do your job. But, You're right. You know, but no, I mean, it needed to happen. So, I mean, our, our county needs to go on the record of saying what we felt the federal government has let us down. Galveston County has done the same, too. Do we don't want local dollars handling their problems. Well, I guess we'll be writing a resolution pretty soon now, will we? Thank you. Yeah.
good, good. I like to take yours and Galveston and combine it. But we got work to do, don't we? Are we going to wrap it up? Hmm? Are we going to wrap it up? We do yeah, we got to wrap it up. So okay. you're up. Yeah, I'll do. Uh, yeah, I'll do my study. Um, okay, so I guess we'll we'll close our first ever SD Eleven Town Hall meeting. <laughs> GOTV, get out the vote, pep talk. Um, our next SREC meeting, like I mentioned earlier, is December the 6th. That's on a Saturday. It's in Austin. It's an open meeting. You may attend. But not record. Just without your but not record. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Scott was there at the last one. Don't get thrown one. out, okay? Don't <laughs> um, just, I just wanted to let you guys know that. Um, and if you're on any type of social media, we're going to have fun this early election. We have created a hashtag. If you're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, what are the other ones, Whitney? Snapchat, yeah, all the. It's it, something to, I don't know, motivate the young ones and make it fun. And I know some of us that are a little older like to do those kind of things too. <laughs> um, but we created the, the hashtag I voted early Texas GOP. And we want it to go viral statewide. So what we're asking, it's, it's a challenge. And um, I posted it on my, my SREC Facebook page as an event. And I think it's on the SD11 Facebook page too mm -hmm. as an event. Starting Monday, we want you to take videos. When you go vote, we have extra signs to give out if you want, LaDawn's holding them over there. And take, take a video, I voted early for the Texas GOP because. By the way, disclaimer, not in the polling place. Not in, but right outside. Outside. Outside the 100. Yeah, yeah, don't give me, some, yeah. Don't give me a time to go to jail now. <laughs> you can even do it in your car. <laughs> don't your car. Um, and we have one, uh, Keep Texas Red, and another one, Election Integrity Matters. A lot of people don't realize that um, populated counties, I believe it's 500,000, counties that have 500,000 and more, whoever wins their gubernatorial race, that party has control of the early elections. Like in here Oh, all the counties? Okay. Okay. I read in the in the statute it's five hundred thousand plus. So we we Oh yeah that's and see that's in Harris County right now. The Democrats appoint or they have the election the early voting election judges so they control our early voting polling location. So we want that back. And we want to keep it. We want to keep it in Brazoria County. Keep it, in Galveston. keep it in Galveston. And we want it back in Harris. So um, that's that's where the voter integrity comes in. We that's so important. And on Saturday, October the twenty fifth, I know um, we didn't properly introduce Scott. Scott is the are you the president? The president of the Galveston County Young Republicans and they're hosting a get out the vote I voted early Texas GOP tailgate party at the um, Calder Road polling location in Leak City and Clear Lake Air Republicans is hosting one in Clear Lake at the uh, Freeman Library in the parking lot so we're gonna make this fun Okay, bring people, we're having a contest. Whoever brings the most people, they win a gift card. Whoever comes up with the most creative video wins a gift card. Mm -hmm. We wanna make it fun. Um, if you're not on social media, I have a challenge for you. It's, <laughs> I'm not letting you get away. <laughs> I'm not getting out of here. <laughs> um, it's the three to get three plan. Um, if you have three friends, three girlfriends you want to go to lunch with, make it a fun day. Make it a, um, okay, let's go to a resale shop. Before we go, let's go by the polling location and vote. 
and then challenge them to do the same thing. Imagine if we all did that, how many people would actually, you know, the numbers, how much they would increase. And did you know, just a little unknown fact to a lot of people, did you know that 40% of registered voters in Texas identify themselves as independents? 40%. And it really breaks my heart when I see members from both parties bashing people for uh, supporting a candidate that they don't think they should be supporting. It's our job to educate and advocate for our candidate and not to bash them for being a free thinker. That's, that's what's wrong with our youth right now. They're being suppressed. They're not being encouraged to be free thinkers. Mine is. <laughs> My daughter is. <laughs> and um, like I said earlier, it's easy to get caught up in, in issues that we disagree on. So um, if we you know, focus on the issues that we do agree on and educate each other on the ones that we don't, you know, that's the only way we're going to bring people over to our side. You attract more bees with honey and education. <laughs> so that's all I have for today. If you have any questions on the um, hashtag thing, and we, we have lots of extra signs over here, we'll be happy to help. And Emily, Emily is, um, y'all watch for the video. We have some new rising stars, Emily and Ashley and... Um, no, Scott didn't make it, but uh, Ben, it. Ben Boyd it's made it, it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and Pedro, Pedro was our videographer, <laughs> now watch for our video and please push it out, we, we need to get out the vote, that's the most important thing. Okay, all right, all right, we almost, uh, yes ma'am, Madam Chair, please. Okay, yes, absolutely, yes. Yeah. All, right. All right, so while we wait out our Chairman Dewey to retrieve her camera. All right, folks, this is the final stretch. Let's get up, let's get in, and let's get going. Victory is close at hand. Amen? Amen. Okay. Wait a minute. Victory is close at hand. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Amen, Brother Holmes? Amen. All right, there we go. And that means we must take not only ourselves to the polls. I like to walk around. You don't mind that, but I like to walk around a little bit. That means not we only take ourselves to the polls, but we take nine people with us. Whether you're doing three for three, whether you're engaged in some of the activities that our wonderful committee woman put together, it is essential that we turn out every conservative voter, independent or otherwise, to the polls. If we are going to send the Democrats packing, we need to send them a very loud and resounding message. And that message says the following. Get the hell out of my state. We are free. So I encourage you, please, contact myself, Ty, and Chairman Dewey, Chairman Meeks, District Executive Chairman Travis, uh, Travis Bryan couldn't be with us tonight over in Harris. John Fields, in, uh, John Fields here in Missouri. Your precinct chairs, your preachers, your friends and your neighbors, get them to the polls. It's very important. We want to thank you all very much. It is such a privilege and an honor to be before you tonight. I want y'all to stay around. Let's take a good family photo together for our first Senate District meeting. Next time, we head to Harris. Yes. How about that? Yes. How about that, huh? Save God, the best for last. God bless you. God keep you. <laughs> God, and God bless the great state of Texas. Thank you very much. Yes. Have a wonderful day. All right, let's gather around. Let's get some pictures. Let's get some pictures. Now, while we're gathering some pictures, I want to just thank uh, Don Ashley.